Well, here we are today in Fusion 360, and while I'm waiting on parts to come in for the Z-axis grease manifold, we're going to be working on today our air spring counterbalance system. Now, this is quite unique, and I got this designed from my buddy Wyatt. He came up with this. It's very ingenious. Uh, I haven't seen anything quite like it, but it basically combines air springs with your traditional weight and pulley system. We're just simply replacing the weight with an air spring. Now how this works is it's a one to two ratio. Now we're looking at about 140 to 150 pounds on our gearbox. So we need to have something around 280 to 300 on the air spring. With that amount of spring pressure, we would be able to lift the head However, we don't really want to lift the head, we just want to kind of balance it. So what we've done is we've came and we're utilizing two 100 pound springs and we think that that's going to give us a nice uh, balancing point for the head. So let's take a look at what we've got. Now Wyatt's original design uh, just used the air spring and the pulley and bracket here. He originally has his mounted on the side However, I want to keep my sides clear because I'm going to be uh, adding a drag chain here on the right in the future and also an ATC on the left. So I wanted to keep the sides of my column clear. So I, I changed his design a little bit and added the extra pulleys up top and this bracket so that I could go overhead and I can actually mount the two springs in the back of the mill. So this frees up the sides for me. Now one of the benefits of this design is the fact that you're not limited by the stroke length of your air spring. A lot of times when you're using these air springs, trying to find one that will give you the 16 inch travel that you need, you're gonna have to have a 35 inch spring and it's hard to fit that in and get it all mounted in without having some overhead bracketry. Uh, that usually is uh, up above your machine and, and in the way. So a get around that, I've seen people take two shocks and mount them together so that you can use shorter shocks and have the longer extension. However, this sign here gives us the freedom of just using the one shock and the chain allows us to get the uh, travel distance that we need. Now I think I'm going to use about I'm going to need about 16 inches of uh, travel length from the top of the saddle here to about a half inch below the top rail. So we're going to be using this spring here which is about uh, 14 inches of extension and that should give me uh, plenty of travel actually more travel than I need for this uh, particular setup. So I'm really excited to get this all worked out and installed. I think it's going to work out really well. Let's take a look. Today we're going to start working on the brackets here for the mounting the pulleys to the air spring. So what we have is a couple of plates here. Now these uh, are 1 8 inch thick aluminum and so two of these will along with the spacer here will make up uh, the air spring pulley so we have this spacer that's threaded on the end to, ex to be able to screw on to the threaded rod here So now let's go out to the Precision Matthews and we'll start machining out some of these parts. So the stock I'm going to be using is some 6061. This is a quarter inch thick, inch and a half wide by three inches long. I've got it set up here in the vise and I'm setting my zero on the back left corner here. All right, so this first operation we're going to be doing the inside so we'll have a we're going to be boring the holes and doing uh, 
a, a shelf in here and then contouring. So let's get started.
This is the first setup for the air spring sprocket bracket. Turned out pretty good. Alright, so the next setup we'll flip this over and then we're going to clean up this extra material here and chamfer around the outside. Okay, for the next setup, I'm going to be flipping the part over and so I'm going to need some soft jaws to hold this in place while I face off and chamfer the outside edge. So this next setup we're going to be just machining the soft jaws. I've got a half inch spacer in between there and we're going to just run this G-code and machine these soft jaws. That should work out nicely. We'll be able to flip the part over and then clamp it right in there like so. All right, now we can do the third operation. It's going to be a facing operation and a chamfering operation.
turned out nice. So let's check the thickness. I'm shooting for 125 thousandths. Looks like we're dead on. So that's good to go. We'll run the rest of them. All right. So now I've got a piece of stock set up here. We're going to be machining out the hub. This is a spacer that goes in here to space out the two sides so the sprocket will fit in between. Uh, and then we'll bolt this all together. This will also have an M6 thread through the bottom that will screw on the end of our air spring. All right, so I'm gonna be getting two of them out of one piece of uh, stock here. The stock is a half inch thick, one and a quarter by three inches. So let's get started.
set up. I've got it uh, repositioned and our corner over here is our zero and we're just going to bore and tap two holes for some M6 threads. So I've got the drill bit in there already. Let's get started. Next we're going to put in our thread mill. This is an M6 by 1. Let's check our threads. All right, that's good. All right, next we're going to set up and we're going to just face off this extra stop. All right, so I've got the part flipped over and I've just got it clamped in my uh, soft jaws here. There's a little ledge. I'm hoping that's going to suffice and I won't have to machine any soft jaws. I think it's going to hold it uh, good enough, but we've got to remove this little bit of uh, stock here. It's about a quarter of an inch, so we'll do that now.
right. Let's get those out and we'll take a look at them. All right, turned out pretty nice. Let's see how it fits together. All right, that's going to fit nice. Get the other plate. You can see I smashed the corner there. That's a sharp corner, so when I clamped it, it smashed that corner a little bit. And that's not going to really make a difference, so it'll be fine. Trying to take a shortcut there and not use soft jaws. And... Alright, so let's see how uh, this thing goes together. So, on these pieces, I did bore and tap each one, but what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to use three holes, three bolts from this side and two bolts from this side, and that way it'll fasten it together like so. So we'll just drill out the two holes on so it's not threaded and makes clearance holes. So let me get one of these assembled and then we'll see what it looks like. Alright guys, well here are the sprockets. These are some uh, sprockets. The chain that I'm using for this particular um, air spring is number 410. This is basically bicycle chain. It's 1 8 inch by half inch lengths. And I think that'll be sufficient for what we're using it for. Um, you can go with 35 chain. My buddy Wyatt went with 35. It's a little bit um, thicker. I think it's a quarter inch or three eighths inch uh, spacing on the links, and it's uh, three sixteenths thick. Um, I found these sprockets on eBay, and so I had to bore out the hub here to fit my bearing. And then I also had to uh, turn this off to make it thinner. And then just press the bearing in there. So that's basically it. I've got a shoulder bolt going through there. And a nut on the back side. So that wraps up the air spring mounting bracket for the sprocket here. And in the next video we're going to work on our chain bracket. Guys, if you're new to my channel and you're interested in the video content, click on the subscribe button. That way when I post a new video, if it's something you're interested in, you can click on the link and drop by and check it out. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and most importantly, be safe.